Every government that has ever risen in the history of the world has, has, been, has, has fallen. And the ones that exist today won't last forever. The Roman government, uh, it only lasted, I think, a thousand years. And as strong and powerful and widespread as it was, it lasted a thousand years and it, it failed. Uh, you know, ca communism is, is, is failing. Capitalism is not doing such a great job. Democracy around the world, things are deteriorating in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, but you and I are born in the midst of this. And we have to learn how to, to, to navigate these waters so that we don't just hate everybody and everything and, and reject authority because that's not scriptural. And so we made the point that part of the reason that people are so unhappy, uneasy, fearful, angry is because they link their future to their country. And they feel like maybe it's not, not spoken, but if the country goes down, I'm doomed. If, if this republic doesn't exist in the form it's in, then my future is lost. And that's just not true. We use the example of David who, who lived in three separate kingdoms, three different kingdoms, three different governments in his lifetime. And he literally rose to the top each time a new government took over. We are called by God to be good citizens and to be part of what's right in our nations. We are part of the answer, not part of the problem. And you can't do that if you're angry and bitter and yelling and, and criticizing and spend all of your time fighting uh, other people and uh, you know other persuasions, other political uh, persuasions. We really need to be bigger than all of that and, uh, and, and, and care, we care for people. Let me give you a couple scriptures. Uh, Psalm 46 verse one says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. We don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen to us if one kingdom or another falls or rises or one government fails or succeeds. I'm not afraid of the Chinese. I'm not afraid of the Russians. I'm not afraid of the global elites. I'm not afraid of the 1%. Listen, we've been called to live for God. We're here to reach everybody. We don't have to run in fear and wonder what's going to happen if this happens. Listen, my destiny is secure in God and so is yours. Daniel's destiny was secure in God. God is going to make a way for you. You have to believe that. That would relieve so much stress and tension and apprehension from your life. If you just take God at his word, he said, I'm not going to be afraid even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. That's pretty dramatic, pretty drastic. And if you're not going to be afraid if the earth is removed, you shouldn't be afraid if a government's removed or if one system fails to work or if we have a financial crash or, you know, there's so many doomsday scenarios out there that just keep people stirred up all the time and it's not necessary. Let's take a deep breath and remember that Jesus is Lord and God's our provider and believe we're going to make it. And if we can build on that foundation, it will eliminate a lot of stress from our lives. Let me give you this scripture. This kind of puts it in perspective. 1 John 4, 17 and 18 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we might have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. He who fears has not been made perfect in love. Can I just encourage you, if you're having problem with torment, maybe it's come from fear. If you're afraid of the world and afraid of the future of the world and you're afraid of your future, if you live in apprehension and listen and hang on every word of news, the good news, the bad news, the current news, the, you know, they not only give you the news, but they predict the, and they, they'll give you predictions about what's going to happen, speculations. If this happens, then this will happen. And then it's all bad from there on. Out. And j let's just reverse that because fear involves torment. And what he's saying here is, look, if you will love instead of fear, you'll be happy. 
It, you can't fear the world if you love the world. And you can't love the world if you fear the world. We've got to choose the path that we want to walk on. And fear involves torment. That's not good for anybody. The Bible encourages us to literally be good citizens. And we can be better. We can be a blessing and an influence in our world if we're not afraid and angry. There's, there's no sense in, in going down that road if we don't have to. I read Romans 13, but <clears throat> let me go back there because it's so, it's just, it's something you don't hear very often, but it's the Word of God. In, in verse 4, he says, For he, that means the government officials, the law enforcement, or whoever's out there keeping the laws of the government, he's God's minister to you for good. Now, if you do evil, be afraid. He does not bear the sword in vain, for he's God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but for conscience sake. And what he's really saying is we ought to be good citizens. We ought to be counted on. We ought to be the voice, the conscience, the, the compassion, uh, the, those who care about right and wrong and do, do the right thing whether anybody's looking or not. Be a good citizen. If you find yourself constantly at odds with the government, you're on the wrong side. If you're constantly angry with law enforcement, if you view them with suspicion, or, or if you're fighting with the IRS and you just, you know, I had somebody tell me this, and I, I want to read this to you, but this kind of illustrates what I'm talking about. I was in a, in a church in a meeting years ago, and one of my friends who was a Christian, he loved God, he was very, very sincere, and he was, uh, he was in business, and he made good money, and therefore he paid a lot of taxes. And he came to me, and boy, was he all upset. He was so exercised. He was mad. He was on his soapbox. And his new announcement was he'd been on the Internet reading after somebody, and he said, I just want you to know something. The taxes are illegal. The government can't make us pay taxes. That's not in the Constitution. And he starts telling me why he wasn't going to pay his taxes. And he goes on this spiel, and he's so mad and angry and upset. And I'm thinking, what a ridiculous statement. You know, I don't know if it's legal, if the government just like pulled this on us or not. But, uh, and I finally, after he sputtered to a close, I said, do you really want to spend the rest of your life fighting the IRS? Is that what you want to spend your life doing? Wouldn't you just rather pay your taxes and then live your life? What a stupid thing. Get all caught up in some, you know, some uh, conspiracy conspiracy theory and, and get completely n neutralized in your life because you spend all your time. You, it, you can fight the IRS, but can I just tell you, you're not going to win. If you try to overturn the tax code, you try to go against the U.S. government, th that's just not where we need to be. Now, if they're telling us Christianity is illegal, you can no longer assemble freely, you can't preach or spread the gospel in word or in print, then we have a problem. But they haven't told us that yet. They expect us to pay our taxes, and I think taxes may be too high, and maybe it's not fair for everybody or whatever, but there is no system in this world that's going to be fair to everybody. There's no system in this world that's not going to be abused. There's no government in this fallen world that's going to be perfect. They're all going to have huge deficiencies. And if you want to focus on those and obsess over those and fight those, you're going to be stirred up for the rest of your life. I just don't want to live that way. In this new series, you will learn the keys to getting your joy back and enjoying life, even in these challenging days. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s or watch the streaming videos for free.